Hey, I'm John Dar with Dar Shackow Insurance, and I'm here with Terry Regar, and we are from the Dar Shackow Employee Benefits Team, and we are getting ready to deliver this big check. $15,000 is going out to one of our clients. Okay. Come on, let's go. Okay. Oh, it's a big, it's a big oh, check. Heavy. Let's see if it'll even fit in the car. Oh my goodness. Oh. Cut, cut. I don't think so. I'm excited to deliver this big check to an employer that had a great year with their employee benefit plan. Not everybody's eligible, but if they are, you too could qualify for a big check. So we finally made it here to deliver the DSI big check. Now for client confidentiality reasons, we can't take you inside. But if you think your business might qualify for a DSI big check, make sure you call Terry or I at 352-338-0552 or click the link below. Oh, cut, no. cut, all right, cut. <laughs> You are listening to WHOA Podcast, coming to you from Gainesville, Florida. Florida. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the WHOA GNV Podcast, the podcast bringing you businesses and individuals that make you go, whoa. That's a weird whoa because of my voice. <laughs> so, um, uh, my, <laughs> my name is Colin Austin, and you guys, my co-host, the one, the only Michael Dees, is super, super sick. Dude, I hope you feel better, man. I feel so bad that he's sick. Um, but, look, look, like, I think we're just gonna have to carry this mic. Like, just so everybody knows, I'm not feeling too hot either right now. My voice is a little scratchy, so I apologize in advance if you hear me sucking on a cough drop or if I'm, like, clearing my throat. But we're gonna get through it. And I told Joe he's gonna have to carry the show. So, actually, that was... Joe, carry the show. Joe, what's up, man? How are you? I'm good, man. How are you? Excellent. Let everybody, I, today in the studio, I have Joe Hancock, the digital mortgage guy and somebody that I am like slowly obsessing over on TikTok in terms of the strategy and everything that he's doing. Welcome to the show, man. How you been? Oh, uh, man, I'm just living the dream right now, man. Just, I'm just having fun. Yeah. So, um, you know, before we get into, sh into the show, Joe, like you do mortgages, right? Like. Yeah. Anytime somebody gets a mortgage, they gotta they gotta get insurance, right, on their house. Oh yeah, you have yeah. no insurance, no, no house, no insurance, no mortgage, no house, not happening, no mortgage, not happening. Yeah. So you guys, of course, if you need insurance, you should call our incredible friends at Dar Shackout Insurance. Um, thank you so much, Dar Shackout Insurance, for your support of our podcast. You guys have said it multiple times. The sponsors are the the reasons why we're. <laughs> The sponsors are the reason why we're going to be able to make this show carry on. And uh, I'm just super, super grateful for their support. So Dark Shack Out Insurance crew, thank you for taking care of all of our needs at New Scooters for Less, Repaint the Wall, and all of my personal needs. You guys are amazing. And, uh, you know, if you're getting a house, you hear this episode, you decide to get a mortgage with Joe, call John Dar and get your insurance for your house. And uh, they'll get you taken care of. You guys, be sure to check them out at darshackowinsurance.com. And that's D-A-R-R-S-C-H-A-C-K-O-W insurance.com. And they'll take really, really good care of you. Uh, so John Dar and crew at Dar Shackow, again, thank you so much for your support. Really, really, really appreciate you guys. And um, <clears throat> Excuse me. And look, there's a really, really cool event coming up right around the corner, so I want to let everybody know about it. The University of Florida is bringing you the third annual Inspiring Women Leaders Conference being held March 8th through 10th, 2020 at the University of Florida Hilton Conference Center. This is a three-day event that will provide the opportunity for personal and professional development, along with interactive pre-conference workshops uh, focusing on dynamic and impactful leadership skills. Uh, they have a really long web eat like web address so just google the <laughs> women leaders conference at uf uh, and i'm sure you can find the link to get tickets again that's going to be march 8th through 10th and i know what you're thinking you're like oh this is like a women's leadership you know this is women leaders conference uh men can't go nope i asked men are complete you know 100 invited they actually encourage it so you guys go check out this great leader conference uh again march 8th through 10th at the university of florida hilton conference center and uh, dude, I'm ready to get in the show, mainly just so I can stop talking already. <laughs> so <clears throat> let me let me uh, tell everybody. Uh, let me let me set up the story because I want to get into your story, right? But let me set it up a little bit. So you guys, I always talk about 
uh, you know, people ask me all the time, like, Colin, like, how do you get on, how do you get on the podcast? And, uh, and there's three ways, right? You can, uh, one, I personally invite you and that happens quite a bit. And two, you can like, uh, have, you know, one of our previous guests, I take their recommendations really, really highly. Uh, so if a previous guest, you know, says, Hey, like this person should absolutely be on your podcast. Then I'm, I definitely like listen to them and, uh, and, you know, and, and vet that out and see if that we can make that come to fruition. And then, uh, third is the application on our website, which we do use quite often. If you go to whoagnv.com and fill out the application on our website, uh, you know, that's a great way for us to like, one know about you and then as we're looking for guests and trying to make a clever a clever unique mix we'll try to we try to get a very unique mix in here for the show um you know we'll we'll reach out so those are the ways you can get on the show and uh joe is one of the guys who caught my attention right like you guys i'm on social media a lot if you don't know this already you should know this by episode 94 you should know that i'm on social media a lot and uh you know, just been on the platforms, of course, you know, like I hear about like TikTok and, you know, I was on, I, like I was on TikTok when it was musically and just kind of exploring. And then I didn't really do much with it. I just kind of like, uh, like this, we'll see. I'll, I'll let this, let this go for a little while. And then, you know, and then TikTok really started to catch some fire. You hear some of the big entrepreneurs, you know, like uh, Gary Vee, which we talked about last episode, like he's, he's always talking about TikTok and the opportunities there. And it's very rare that I see somebody like, like actually uh, like living up to advice or living, you know, executing on a, a new platform, especially in a business as unique as mortgages, right? <laughs> on a platform that is for children. Uh, you know, they these new platforms, they get labeled, oh, that's for kids, that's for kids, that's for kids. Well, like, I'm sure Joe's a kid at heart. <laughs> But he's no longer a kid. And I was just captivated by the way he was using this platform. And I cannot wait to really dive into social media, TikTok, and the unique ways that you're doing, do it like using this platform. Um, but that's how he got on the show. He, he caught my attention. And I was like, man, I want to interview this guy and, and talk everything TikTok. And as of, you know, TikTok as of February 4th, 2020, which is the day that we're recording, right? So, um, so Joe, before we like dive into all that, just set up your story, like, you know, here in Gainesville, what brought you to Gainesville? Like, you know, just, just give us your story, man. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Well, born and raised in Gainesville, ACR. ACR, yep. Latch County resident, so, baby. So, so I've been here all my life, traveled around a lot, but I've, I never moved away. I always stayed here. So it's just, the way it is, and a lot of us have done that. So, um, and uh, I uh, ended up dropping out of high school. And when I dropped out of high school, I ended up getting a job at one point with the bank. And um, I was a bank teller, and I always noticed the guy in the back of the bank in the office seemed to not work as hard as I did. <laughs> and uh, may, and he drove a Corvette. And so I said, "Man, how do I do what you do?" And he says, "We got to have a degree." And I was like, "Oh, so I'm I'm out." So. Um, How long ago was this? 1991. Okay. So I ended up starting another company. I started a business um, for a while. It did pretty well and um, ended up selling that company and then tried different things throughout the years. And come about 1998, I said, I'm, I'm, I want to get back into the finance game. I want to get into into the mortgage business. So I, I said, I need to figure out how I'm going to do that. And uh, I looked into getting my mortgage broker's license and from there, um, I walked into a company and said, hey, I, I'll work for free to learn. And he pulled his chair up and said, you're hired. And, uh, <laughs> I got a job, I mom, got a dad. Job. I'm working, I'm making good. So I ended up mowing lawns and washing cars for you know a year while I learned a business. And uh, But that was the Simply best Simply because learn. you just wanted to learn the skills learn. of that particular business. Yep, I wanted to learn what I was doing. And then after a year, I was off and running and, uh, and, and I'd been in it for 23 years now. Well, so you were working for free for a year. Yeah. And you were doing side hustles to, yep. to pay, to live? Yep. 
Were you still living at home? No, I I had a little crap apartment that I lived in for a little while because I I didn't really care about status stuff. And I had had some money that I had saved up, so I was able to get by and stuff. And and, uh, Hare Krishna's helped out a lot with food. Um, during you know, certain days <laughs> okay. of the week. So, so I lived in the student ghetto areas. And so I was able to just get by. I had a station wagon that I drove around and uh, I would I would do, I had to, I, I kind of did a little bit of cleaning on the side and did, did just, you know, just little things here and there just to get extra cash when I needed it. But I had enough savings to get through. But I was learning the business and I was really focused on that. So I spent a lot of time at the company just learning what he did because this guy was very successful at it. He did really, really well, and so and I saw how well he was doing, and I said, "I want to do this." And but I need now, to. Now, did know he know that? Yeah, he knew. Okay. He knew. He he knew that I wanted to learn, and he was bringing me in, and he would give me some some money here and there, and then finally, eventually, after uh, after almost a year, he said, "You know what? I'm going to give you a thousand a month." And I said, "Ah, oh, sweet." So I was like, "Get a thousand a month," and then he said, "All right, get your go ahead and you now you're licensed. I'm going to let you start originating and start showing you that part of it." And there's it's a lot of moving parts in that. You can get burned really quick if you don't know what you're doing in this business. And so um, I learned a hard way on a couple of deals, but having him as a mentor really helped me out. So I was with him for about three years until he moved south, and then uh, I didn't want to move south. And so uh, I ended up working for another company and I started from there, I started to kind of know what I was doing and learning and, and I loved the marketing aspect of it and how you kind of are entrepreneurial even though you're working for companies. And my ultimate goal in the long run was actually to start my own mortgage company and as I was heading that way, we ran into the crash and so it wasn't a good time to do that. Um, but it was a, by then I had enough business built up and I was in management levels that I was able to just work my way through so um, and get through the crash and just keep pushing forward and just evolving with this business because this business has been evolving and it's been really behind actually on technology for years, years. And it's just now getting to where now it's about to get into like the digital platforms. Okay, in what ways can you give me an example? So, like, you are know, you talking like paperwork? Yeah, or paperwork like- is one. I mean, it's so antiquated on the paperwork side. I mean, you still, when you go to a closing, you sign this big stack of papers that is a repeat of everything you, you digitally signed in the beginning. The only parts that really are important are your note and your mortgage. The rest of it's garbage, really. And so they're they're narrowing it down now to where it's where you're really digital. So you can get it, it's common. You're going to be able to go to a closing, and it's pretty much going to be on an iPad. Click 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 through. You sign the note and you sign the mortgage physically because it's recorded, and you're done. And it's going to be a lot faster, a lot smoother. And that technology is there. It's just now the companies have got to evolve into it and test it and make sure it's happening. And so I'm, I've been watching all this stuff for years as it's been developing and I've been a big pusher on technology in this business because it's just been so, so old school and just so Is that because slow. some of the people that are still in the business are a little bit older and they're just used to the paper trail way and they just don't want to change? Yeah, senior leadership in mortgage businesses and owners of businesses are, there's no real youth in our business because there's really no path to get in. If, if you get in this business, it's hard to just walk out of school and say, hey, I'm going to get into mortgage business, originate loans. There's just no path. There's no training. There's no way to get in unless you can find somebody or a company that's willing to train you, which nobody is. So you just, so a lot of people are my age and up in the business. And so finally we're starting to see youth come into it. But some guys that are like the Gen Xers like myself, you know, we, we know technology and we, we help you know, we grew up without technology and we grew up in technology. So we know both sides and we know the advancements of technology. And so we're getting into the positions now of leadership of these companies and saying, it's time to make this, this change. And, it, and now we're seeing this drastic shift. Tech companies are coming in now, developing all the technology that is a secondary platform for us to use in this business. And we can just really take this thing to a whole nother level. And it's coming, it's rapidly coming. And we're seeing a shift from, kind of similar to the shift we saw when mortgage companies went from um, really face-to-face into the dot-com era when you had the websites and, and you were able to start doing more stuff online. It's still very physical, but it was still more online. And then now we're going into a shift where it's really getting completely digital to where, you know, I can, my, I can originate loans super fast now because if we stay on the, on the digital platforms, we can get you done in 15 days. 
10 days in some, in some cases. It depends on the person, but it makes it easier. In the paperwork side of it, if you did it more straight, you know, we're dealing with paper back and forth and it can take longer because there's just more stuff to go through. Digitally, it can just happen so much quicker. And now the AI is picking up to where it's reading more docs, it's pulling stuff in, it's catching things quicker. And so we're able, and there, there's processes now that are identifying tasks that need to be done that can make everything move a lot quicker. So, cause a mortgage is kind of like an assembly line. You have step by step by step by step and you, you run it through and you manufacture this loan. And so as long as you're manufacturing it and you can reduce those steps and make them simple, you can just, you can sail this thing through. Okay, so how long before everybody's doing that digitally? In the next five years, you're gonna see a massive shift in this business. Okay. Um, the ultimate goal, the ultimate goal for this, and, and when I've talked to other leaders in, in the technology side, the ultimate goal is to get everything on your thumbprint. So you can thumbprint and we know your whole financial, your whole financial picture. So you can say, I wanna get a mortgage, do that. And, but where people still want is they wanna be able to talk to you though too at the same time. So where I'm trying to do with my whole marketing is you, I can provide this where you can get digital, but if you need me, you push a button and you can find me. So that's the thing where, you know, when we go up against the bigger companies that, are, that have a lot of more technology international, I can say, you know, like I'll usually say with, the, with rocket mortgage or rockets in space, I'm in your face. And so I can do these kind of things to be able to still c- capture your local market, but still take care and take advantage of the technologies. I like that. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, I'm sorry, I got like lost in rocket space. Rocket <laughs> <in your face. laughs> so, we started working uh, for this guy for free. How old were you? I was in my twenties. I can't remember. Okay. Where in my twenties at that point? And so a year later. You start like working for him, like, or did I was you still, actually do your own thing? No, I was working for him. I was in his company under his license, and then I started to be able to originate. So I was kind of working my own little business and finding my niche in the business. And at that point, I was working more subprime business because I didn't have referrals, a good referral base built. So the subprime at that time was something that you could find. I, I liked helping people come out of their. They had bad credit or ways that. I could help them build their credit back up so your standard loans wouldn't fit them. So we were able to get them into houses and then be able to show them away a path to ownership. So it was an easier way to find loans. And then as that, as those clients actually grew, then I grew with them because they were my database. I always kept a database. And so they would come back through, refinance or buy another house. And so their credit's improving and my loans are improving. My, my and So I'm growing that. And then as I'm getting uh, better at what I'm doing, more realtors are saying, hey, he actually knows what he's doing. Because when you go to a realtor when you first get in this business, they're gonna go, I, I don't wanna work with you. I, you don't know what you're doing. You're gonna mess my, my business up. Because th- your paycheck is in their hands. Yeah. I mean, in our, ha- in our hands. So their paycheck is in our hands to get this delivered on the forum. So they put a lot of faith in their referral sources. And there's a lot of good loan officers in this town too. A lot of old school loan officers been around a long time. And so at the time there was a, there was guys that were here for years. And so I was going up against those guys, they kind of faded out. And then some of the guys that came in when I came in are still around to this day and some, some dynamite loan officers in town. So you gotta be good. So how long have you been doing this now? 23 years, 24 years. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, just walk me through some of those years from, from that process, from the, process of working for this guy, learning all this stuff to getting to where you're at right now. So my, as I worked through the, the business, I, the biggest thing that I wanted to do is I, I realized as, as a business owner back in the, in the nineties, I still was entrepreneurial, still wanted to lead, still wanted to be able to um, help grow people. And so my goal was to get into management in the business. So I worked, my original strategy was I want to get to the bigger companies to see if I can work my way up. And so uh, I ran into the plateau of, you don't have a degree. And so I, they would hire in um, guys that were young and didn't really know what they were doing and in and, and the senior leadership of, above me. And so I had to prove my way up in those areas. And so I, I slowly worked my way by showing what I knew and how I could actually grow. My, my strategy was when I had a boss that, that I could tell didn't know what he was doing, I wasn't gonna try to point out they didn't know what he's doing. What I did is I tried to enhance his or her knowledge to help them grow, and then I just grew with them, and they and they would help me grow, and then you, you get recruited to other companies that see your talent, and so my goal was to was to slowly work my way into a senior level uh, 
position in the mortgage industry. And so now I'm in a position that's called an area manager slash regional. So I can, I can, um, the, the goal is to have a total region. So my area is, is North Florida. And so my goal is to recruit and grow loan officers as well as originate loans. So, um, so the, the purpose for me is now to help show other loan officers techniques that I'm using to grow and then also grow my own origination business. Because in this business, you don't want to let go of your origination. Yeah. That's your security blanket. I've seen too many guys get in this business. <coughs> they let go of all their origination. And then the larger company will say, we're cutting costs and you're expensive and you're gone. And then you haven't uh, been talking to your referral sources for a long time and then you're, you're literally, I mean, I've seen guys making you know, half a million a year go to zero overnight. And so I, I realized at the time, it, you gotta keep your origination intact. And my strategy this year is actually to increase my origination uh, by at least 50 to 60%. Um, and, it's, and it's rapidly growing quickly. Yeah, so let's uh, let's get into TikTok. Yeah, man. Right? I mean, you. This is where some people like turn off the show. <laughs> like, nope. TikTok. No. <laughs> Not getting into TikTok. Yeah. No, you guys. So this is a platform that's really blown up in the last few months. Um, I don't even know where where it really started firing, but 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 it did. And there's kids on there that have 22 million followers and doing crazy crazy stuff and it's a platform for kids mm-hmm. quote unquote right and and you're using this to really i mean two things grow your business but mm-hmm. grow your brand yeah so can you kind of just tell us why you picked up the platform and you know what's happened since you've done so so what i did i used to create videos and go through um and your guys here creating videos know all about this editing and the creating and you know uploading to to bring all the all the uh you know the closed caption in there all that i'd create these and i always wanted to keep it at one minute informational videos on facebook and youtube and stuff and i noticed you know i get some engagement but mortgage is boring it's extremely boring. And so people would listen a little bit, but then I watched it, I'd track what people did and I'd say, man, the, for the first 10 seconds, I, I, I've got a lot of, I'm hitting a lot of people, but they don't stay with me, <laughs> so they're moving on. So I was trying to figure out how I could do something in 10 seconds or 15 seconds, and then I thought my, my biggest thing was I wanted to bring humor to it because in my opinion, I mean, I look at the Super Bowl ads, the best ones are the humorous ones. The best ads I always remember are funny ones. And so I wanted to figure, and I, and I try, I like humor. So I said, I need to figure out a way that I can do something in 10 or 15 seconds to have humor to it. So I didn't really, I heard of TikTok and I finally downloaded the app and I looked at it and I'm scrolling through and I see everybody dancing on there and I'm going, well, that's a lot of dancing people on here. <laughs> it's just like dancing. So, and, and, and then as I'm throwing through and I'm hearing something, I start seeing some skits on there and I'm going, Oh, so I decided to play with one and I made my first one, which is me just kind of doing stuff in mortgage and I had it going to music and I threw it out on LinkedIn and all of a sudden, like I had all these people reaching out, this is the greatest video I've ever seen. And I was like, wow, I mean, it took and why? Me. Why do you think it was, why it do you was, think it resonated? It had music, it had energy, it was different and it was quick. And I think the biggest thing that I think really captured everyone is, um, and especially on LinkedIn, everyone everyone that's doing videos on LinkedIn that I see are a lot of um, trying to be motivational or informational. And so my strategy behind it was to not try to do all that because everyone else is doing that and I want to do something short and to the point. So my original strategy was to show a lot of energy in mortgage, like everything I'm doing and have these really fast paced uh, songs in my background. But then I started seeing the skit stuff and I started thinking of ways that I could do um, informational stuff. Like I did one for, you know, I need all your, if you're gonna do bank statements with me, I need to, I need all your pages. So it had this song that it was perfect for it and it goes do, 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 like that. So I yeah. point, bang, bang, bang. I need all pages, <sighs> you know, and it, and it, and it took off. And I've, and I've, I mean, and on, TikTok, I've had one that's gotten a couple hundred thousand views and stuff, but TikTok's really not been where my business is coming from. It's more been a, a, a video editor for me. 
But the the neat thing is, it's such an easy video editor. And then I it, TikTok is smart on this. They let you when they when you create one, it downloads to your phone, and then you can just drop it on on YouTube. You can drop it into LinkedIn, Facebook, and so. That's what I've been doing with it, and it's been different. And so when I'm dro- I drop it on, on, and I'll do one a day. So I have one that I, and I'll drop it on LinkedIn, I'll drop it on Facebook. And people have now starting, they, they see me constantly popping up, and they'll give me 10 seconds. And so that's, that's what they're, they're giving me 10 to 15 seconds of their time. And the feedback has been, they, they think it's funny, they like it, and and now I've, I've been able to track back, at least at the time, last time we talked, it was four loans, now it's seven loans that I've tracked back like to, to the it. App. Yeah, yeah, that I've tracked back to that actual- Content. Um, yeah, to the content that's coming in. And compared to the other videos that I was creating, <coughs> I, did, I couldn't track back actual loans to it, and plus the time I was putting into it, so my actual- How are you tracking it back? People just said, I, I saw asked your video? Me, I straight up asked, okay. I, say, I say, how did you, because some of them, I, I don't know them. And uh, so it wasn't through referral sources, it was direct straight into me. And so they, they found me, and so I asked them, how'd you find me? And so I saw your TikTok video. And so, yeah. and I usually ask them which one, so I kinda know which ones are kinda working. But, um, and that's, that's what I just started. And the biggest thing I found was the humor, and, because, and I've had people say, you, know, you feel like you might be degrading your, 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 your brand. image, your brand, okay. by doing this, and I said, you know, when I first started it, I was a little worried it might actually, and I was a little nervous about putting stuff out there that was kind of w- with humor and a little stupid. Little. <laughs> and Would you uh, say it's on edge for the industry? Like people don't talk about those things? No, they don't, and, and, and they- Because uh, like some of the stuff, I mean, it's like client says this, yeah, mortgage, you know, loan, yeah. loan officer says this, client says this, Correct. loan officer says this, and you're basically putting on a skit with yourself, doing yep. different angles, right, and yeah. editing this together. So a client potentially could see that and be like, "Oh, this guy's like, yeah, this guy's a, a yo yo." <laughs> and so, and and I worried a little bit about that initially, and I've honestly I've seen more business out of it than anything else. So okay. I feel the people that may get turned off by it, I wasn't getting their business anyway. Yeah. And so um, the biggest, the, so I, I really wanted to get humor. And, and I mean, if you look at, and, and again, humor, look at um, just just recently, Quicken's loan, the Quicken Loan's video on Super Bowl, there was a humorous ad, the guy's taking off all his stuff and turns into skinny guy. Yeah. That was funny. Jason yeah. Momoa. <laughs> yeah, that was good, it was good. Yeah. I mean, so, and that's that's my whole strategy behind it. Is, so I'm using TikTok in that way. Did you, have you taken your muscles off on uh, TikTok yet? Yeah, they're off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They've been off. Um, but yeah, so I mean, that's the, the humor strategy has been the, the angle. That's the area that's working for Let me. Uh, so I, I wanna kinda go back a little bit because I want to, I really wanna just, lay some of this out, some of our audience hasn't downloaded the platform yet, Mm -hmm. they haven't used it, right? They have no idea what we're talking about, which is fine, like, you're gonna go and download it right after this podcast and and figure it out. Um, The cool thing is you can actually, like, view other people's videos without even having an account, so you can just download the app and actually start scrolling and seeing the stuff on the For You page, which is kinda cool. Um, So, like, the things that I've noticed about this platform is its ease of use is like incredible. Mm-hmm. Like, like you said, right? So you can you create anywhere between a 15 second and 60 second clip. Yep. Right? You can, you know, save other people's videos. So as you're scrolling on the For You page, which is, that's the thing that's led to discovery because you, you make a video, something with the algorithm sees that people are watching it for the entirety or whatever it is, like whatever the algorithm says, right? And you're, video starts to get seen by a lot of people. And that's why you can have one that takes off and hit 200,000 views. We've had Josh, one of our videographers, like he had one that's reached 600 something thousand views. You know, like it's it's, it's crazy. Um, And and he's only posted like like a handful of videos. Like it's nothing crazy, you know? And and that's the organic discovery that Gary Vaynerchuk and other, you know, people who are into this platform have have really talked about. Like you can can get a lot of uh, discovery right off the bat, right? Yeah. the sounds, right? So you go through the For You page, you're you're looking at other people's content. Correct. Right? And you see something, whether it's their original audio or maybe it's a trending audio sound, right? Because yep. there's like little music clips uh-huh. or there's a skit type clip that yep. somebody has created and you can save that sound. Mm-hmm. You add that as a favorite sound and then you go back and you create your own content to that sound later. Correct. And that to me is what makes the content like 
easy to create. Exactly. Because when people start talking about Instagram, you know, there's been a lot of comparison, right? Oh, Instagram, Instagram versus TikTok and all this kind of stuff. That's fine. Like you can compare them, but Instagram is, you're documenting content. Like if I pull out Instagram stories, right? Hey, we're here filming a podcast. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm documenting an Instagram stories. I'm taking a picture of my plate of food. I'm like showing what's happening in my life and I'm posting a picture. Yep. Right. Whereas on TikTok, like you have to create Correct. Like you have to create yeah, content. Create and that's where people really start to win because you have to be a content creator, not a content documenter. True. At that's least true. at least as of right now. As of right now, yeah. You're right. I mean, as, and that's what I do. I go through, I look at it, and, and I, I, I budget out a certain time. Usually on a Monday, I'll go through, and I just sit there and scroll through, and I save the sounds. And I'll like certain videos, and but I'll usually save the sounds. And it's, if it's anything that I think that I, that I like or I think of some kind of idea that might come out of it, I just save it. And then I spend time going through those sounds. And then that's when my creativity mind, that's when I think of something that might be funny. And so I go, oh, I could do this. And then, I, and then, it's, then, it, then it comes to, okay, now it's time to do it. And usually when I think <laughs> of it and I come up with the idea, I say, all right, I'll start into it. And usually, you know, depending on what it's gonna be, it, it, it'll depend on you how much time you know. If you gotta act out the skit, like probably the hardest one I did was the Michael Jackson one because there was so many little, eh, ah, ooh, ooh, and oh, I, yeah, yeah. I, you had to, and I wanted them, you had to be right on, and so that one took like 45 minutes, you know, <laughs> I'm sitting there in my kitchen, I was supposed to go somewhere, and you know, I was waiting for my wife to show up and, and kind of go, what are you doing? All right, <laughs> so in an example like that, or like pull, let's pull like, the, the fact that we have such a business audience mm -hmm. that listens to this podcast, right? Everybody's listening. It's like, man, these guys are crazy. Like, I can't believe they waste their time on this. Like, what do you say to those people? I mean, because, how, well, let me ask this first. And then how much time are you spending on TikTok each week? Two hours. Two hours, for the whole week? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And are you allocating time to that creation? Because you said you release one a day. So yeah. talk, walk me through your process a little bit, mm -hmm. and then I want to know what you say to the people who, who think <laughs> so, this is a complete waste of time. So the, the originally it was it, it, I, I didn't have it relegated like that. Originally it was just kind of like I was figuring it out, and then once I kind of said, okay, I've got enough data in here as far as saved sounds. I figured out that, okay, I'm gonna go through and I'm not gonna look at, uh, look at like I'm not gonna get phone calls, I'm not gonna look at emails, I'm, not gonna, I'm just gonna focus on creating something. And so my goal is to try to create five TikToks in that period of time. And so Which I is, use, how long? Um, usually a TikTok will take me about 10 minutes to do, depending to do on the acting that I have to do in it. I mean, you, you have to, you know, some of them you, you have to word out things and so you're, you're mouthing whatever you're hearing. So sometimes you're doing that. So you want to get it right. And so that can take a little longer when you do those. But the ones that are to music are easy because, you know, you just the, the biggest thing is like if you're timing certain things that you're going to do for the text on the video, that that would be the longest part. So th my time in creation is so much less on this versus when I was using you know, iMovie and, and, and everything else and creating all these and, and, and also searching out so much audio to do my other videos that I was creating. There was so much time that I put into that. I, I would take four hours to create one video right. where now in two hours I can create probably five or six videos and I usually have multiple shirts laid out. I lay out shirts because I change shirts and I change my design of whatever I'm doing. And that's and that's because you don't want to have the same shirt on for like five different videos. And it, even though it'll go okay, I usually try to look a little different for each one of them. And then I have them all done, and then I'll usually just release them throughout the week. I mean, and is there a spe specific time that you're looking at? Or I'm experimenting with that. Are you? So um, I've found that 7 a.m. is awesome. I get good good response on that. And then at <laughs> um, usually about excuse me. 4.30 to 5.30 in the afternoon seems to go well. Um, lunchtime does okay, um, but the early morning has been the best. It seems like people get up and they just look and they see it, usually they're working out or whatever they do and they have that morning coffee and they, oh, there's Joe's dumb morning video. And so <laughs> I, I see it and then, and then that, that usually gets, and then throughout the day I'll get engagement off that video, either comments or people direct messaging me. Um, and that's, that seems to be the best time so far for me on that, but I've been experimenting. I've dropped them at different times just to see what would happen. 
because I had a friend of mine said, you need to drop it at 10.30 every day. And so I did 10.30 and that was terrible time for that. It didn't do, any, <laughs> didn't do good at all. Um, but it, so I, I've been experimenting with the time drop. Um, but, um, but yeah, it's just, and sometimes I have done some TikToks, like I'll get a random inspiration to do one. Like I did one this morning, I was just driving in and I had the idea, so I pulled off the road and created it real quick. And, uh, and so sometimes that'll happen. Okay. So are you getting your family involved? Like how much of the content is like business, like mortgage, funny stuff? And then how much of it is like bringing it's, your family in? Cause you said you had kids when yeah. we were talking before. How, like how many kids do you have? I have two. I have, okay, uh, how old are they? Uh, five and four, or six and six and four. Okay. And there was, say he's about to be six. So I'm just gonna go ahead and call him six. So. Okay, so are they like making TikToks with you? Yes. My, my 10 year old like, gets all over my wife's TikTok and they do the funny voices yep. and they got people that they follow that they just love the voices and they'll redo the the they'll redo the clips and they'll do the duets, right? So yeah, TikTok yeah. has this feature where you can like basically do a duet with somebody else's content. Correct. Um, where it puts the video side by side if you're listening and you can do a duet. So I mean the how much of the content is business? How much is family? And how much of it matters when you're creating content? So that's one, that was the other thing I wanted to balance out. I didn't want it to all be business because then eventually people are going to kind of turn that off um, in, on the Facebook platform. And so I wanted to um, create just funny stuff in general. So, and the kids love it. The kids see me doing it. So they are, they're acting it out and they want to be involved. So I've found different ones that they can do. And they're, they're getting into it. They love playing along. They like, I'll say, hey, you wanna make a video today? And they're, yay! So they get all excited and they wanna make a video. And so we, we make a video. Um, I'm encouraging my wife right now. I've got three picked out. Wife. Yeah, I got three picked out that'll be perfect. Um, and I just wanna get her to, to, to commit to do it. But, you know what's funny about that is that my wife, like when I was doing my vlog, you know, I've done a vlog for a while, and then other content, she typically, doesn't want to have anything to do with it, but she's been making TikToks. Yeah. She's been making TikToks and she's been, and now like, I'm sure like, I, I don't, I, I know her, her account's public. Anyway, um, but she's been making them with my, with my son. Mm -hmm. And, and so it's, it's interesting. And this is like one of the reasons, cause I've had, a, you know, I go and I do a bunch of public speaking stuff locally and people, you know, always, it's always social media Q and A stuff that where we really get going and, and TikTok has come up often. And I, you know, I'm starting to realize that TikTok has the opportunity to go really big. Yeah. And, and the reason, and I have, I have an interesting reason. This is the first platform that all generations have grown with, grown up with. You think about Facebook. Like, Facebook agree. came out. It was for college students, right? People left with, like it was that was that's now as it scaled up, people started ditching Facebook. They went to Instagram. Yeah. They went to Snapchat. Like all the kids, right? They went to yeah. the next platform, the next platform, the next platform. Mm -hmm. And with TikTok, something interesting has happened because as more and more I'll put in quotes, old people. Yeah. And I'm talking like, you know, to a to a 10 year old kid, <clears throat> 20 is old, right? Yeah. So as 10 year olds and, you know, he heavy in the early teens, right? 13, 14, 15 year olds, a lot of them on this platform. Um, they're not, they're not ditching TikTok. No. They're not looking for the next thing. They're, they're staying on the platform. And in fact, I don't think I've seen as much content being created with their parents, right? It's mm -hmm. like it's like make my make my dad TikTok yeah. famous. Don't let this flop. Yeah. And they bring oh, in their that. parents, yeah. they bring in their grandparents. This is the first social media platform where I've seen all generations on. And I don't think yeah. there's another one that I've uh, actually like seen that with. No, to the level that I've seen I agree. And it, it's a it's a fun platform. You know, you have a lot of I think that's part of it. You get you have a lot of fun on it. The duets are great. I love doing the duets. I'm I'm doing more. I've got a few more that I've gotten targeted that I'm going to do. Um, like there's one that is a dancing. What do you mean targeted? I've, I've got them saved. Okay. And then I'm going to do at them later. I'm okay. just getting an idea. I, like one I'm practicing, it's a dance one. So I'm trying to get all the, this guy's good. So you're now practicing your dance moves, huh? I'm, I'm like practicing. <laughs> I'm, I'm like literally getting on cue with this guy. He's awesome. And so I got to try to get everything in. And, and part of that TikTok is going to be, you need to be in sync with your ops team. And so it's gonna be it's gonna be a mortgage related one, and saying how you need to be in sync with either your client or your ops team or however I don't know where it's gonna go yet, but that's kind of 
how that creativity. So you're pulling other people, other work people into these? No, no. This oh. is this is. I've got a guy that's he's a dan. He's doing a dance, and is in. And so the music is just awesome. I love the music to it, okay. and the way the guy's dancing to it, I thought it was pretty <laughs> cool looking. So I said, I think I can do that one. And so they have to learn uh, it. Yeah, and I'm and I'm working on it. And then my kids are doing one, or are working on spooky, scary skeletons. They they love that one, and so we've been working that. So you can do all that, and that's the fun thing is you. There's so much you can do, and and, and like my wife, I think is going to do those TikToks with me because she sees the fun in it and I think I think that's the thing everybody sees that it's fun and, and the other thing I found really interesting is all the comments on all of my TikToks mostly are super positive everyone's super positive in there like they they comment you they compliment you everybody's really positive the only one that got any kind of negative was the one that really really had the most um Views and it, the only negative comments is where people were talking about the crash in 2008, and because that that video was about that you can get a mortgage without 20 percent down, and the, and some of the folks were, were making comments oh, of like, what about oh, the yeah, crash in 2008? Yeah. And so, it, and but the the clear piece of that that I got out of the comments is I was able to see the public's perception of mortgage and the public's perception of of what you can actually do in mortgage. <laughs> is very limited. They don't realize what's available out there that's not crash related. And so I use that information to create other information to be able to say, and, and, and also share with my mortgage teams and with other people in our industry. It's like, we're not doing a good job of letting people know that you can get into a house with no money down. It's not some crazy 228 type of loans that were in the back in the past. They're, they're solid loans. There's ways to get people into houses. So this was very much a creative, unique, uh, entertaining way of translating that message. Yeah. And then why did you choose, actually tell, tell me a little bit about the platforms that you choose to take the content from. Cause uh, I mean, are you just sitting there you're like, okay, like this 13 year old who is probably viewing this on TikTok is obviously not my audience, right? Because yeah. like audience is important. I tell people all the time when I, when I go and I speak, I'm like, you gotta know where your audience is, yeah. right? So what platforms were you taking the content to? all of them or I, I take it to uh, Facebook and LinkedIn and then I'll take it to um, Instagram stories and that's where that's where I drop it at and then also Twitter uh, but I don't I don't have a huge following on Twitter at all and I don't get a lot off of that but I just drop it on there anyway just to keep a Twitter going but where my most of my engagement is coming <laughs> from is is off of uh, Facebook and LinkedIn and that's where that's where I'm seeing it now. On my on Facebook, I see a lot of engagement now off the stories because I can share, of course, the Instagram story on both. And so I'm seeing a lot of engagement coming on the stories. Before my stories, I didn't see a lot of a lot of engagement, but now I'm seeing more. Um, so um, so I, that that's the platforms that I really see the engagement on of. And t uh, on TikTok itself. I get, I mean, I get a lot of comments and I get people to talk to me and stuff, but like I said, they're, most of the folks on there are not my target um, <laughs> because most of the people I know, other than you and a few others, they're not on it. Right. With with Facebook, what one, and that's going to change, right? Like, yeah. I'm, I'm seeing more and more people check it out yeah. and <clears throat> that's gonna change. Excuse me for clearing my throat, sorry guys. Um, on Facebook, are you posting it to like your personal Facebook or is it, do you have like a Facebook business have, page as well? I have a business page, but I, I really don't use the business page as much as I used to ever since they changed a few things on that to how you see it. I, I, I do it on my on my actual personal page. And the way I, way I approach Facebook is kind of like a CRM in a way um, because it's, it is the way I'm able to connect with everyone I know <laughs> and, and letting them know what I do without annoying them about what I do. And also it keeps the engagement of like, okay, Joe does mortgages, I know it because I've seen his TikTok videos for a couple seconds, but also I balance those TikTok videos out with stuff with my kids and other stuff, not just the the <laughs> mortgage related ones. So I try to you know put in if you just had to, family. If you had to break that down into a percentage, what would you say it is? Percentage family versus percentage business? I'm trying to keep it 60, 40. 60, <laughs> um, it's 60 business, 40% family, but I'm probably gonna shift it to Marty, probably 50, 50. Um, but that's that's the, that's about where I probably keep it right now. Okay. Um, so so what do you say to the people that are seeing this on, I mean, have you had anybody message you directly on LinkedIn saying, 
I saw your video. Like, what is this? Have you, you know, have you had to try to convince people to to get on? Like, what are? I just want to know what other people think of you doing this. It's been overwhelmingly positive right now. Um, everyone that has messaged me directly is either asking advice on on how do I get on TikTok, or you know, or I love what you're doing with it. I've had CEOs of other mortgage companies reach out directly to me and say, hey. We're, we're sharing your content with our loan officers and telling them this is what they need to be doing. Um, and so I'm, I'm getting nothing but positive feedback from everybody that's directly hitting me with it. So it's, it's always been, it's, it's usually a question of, if, if they're talking about the TikTok in general, it's usually like, how did you create that? How did you come up with the idea? You know, And the other part is I'll get direct messages. Like I got three today of mortgage inquiries that, were people like I could tell I knew where they're coming from because they've seen the videos and I can tell that where that where that conversation starting so um, those direct messages for for actual business are actually coming through Facebook the direct messages from in, from LinkedIn are are business contacts and <coughs> the strategy behind that on the business contact side because I recruit loan officers in recruiting loan officers don't like recruiters they're they're busy they don't have time for it they don't know you. So now with TikTok videos, I'm making them industry related on there. They're seeing it, they're laughing at it, they're getting to know who I am. So when they actually get a call from me on a recruiting call, they know they already know who I am. Yeah, and before long, they're gonna start coming to you. Correct, I'm hoping. So <laughs> that's, that's the goal is that I, I want them to, to understand. And the, the point of this for me too is to let people know who I am and, and make myself real. What I've found with the TikTok was showing the family and doing funny videos and then doing industry related funny videos is letting people know who I am. You know, it's not, I'm not just foreign to them on that. And so I make it, I'm, I'm making myself, I hope I am making myself more personable, more approachable, and, and it seems to be working very well. Do you concern yourself with the ROI of the time being invested into these? Or are you just kind of like, man, I just let, let's see what happens. Cause I mean, it's hard to measure, right? You said, I mean, yeah. you said you could track seven, but yeah. could have been more. Yeah, it could be more. And, and I've only been doing it for just a little while. It's probably since December really is when I started getting into it. Like maybe late December, late, late <laughs> November, December is where I really started cranking into it. So it, it's still fresh and new for me, but I, the biggest piece for me is I didn't want to be, what I was running into with my old videos is was just the amount of time it took to make one video. And I, and I want to make it right. I don't want to just, you know, make a, a junk video. And so, and then what I just saw coming back out of that wasn't, just wasn't there. And then also with, with the mortgage videos, again, like I said before, it's boring. You know, and then so trying to get it entertaining and make it where it's actually where someone's going to actually other, look at it if they're not my my boring videos people will watch if they're right now fixing to look for a mortgage. Right. My funnier ones people will watch even though they're not looking for a mortgage right now. Maybe later down the road they will, but they watch that because it's sim, semi entertainment. With the amount of editing and other things with other videos, right? Were you posting consistently during those times, or were you just was it I, very sporadic? It was sporadic. It was it was consistent, and then it would get off. It was, and then it would get off. Okay. And the reason was the time and the editing component. So I want people to realize that one, like hearing you say that, like I instantly know as a marketer, yep. I'm like, okay, he lost consistency. Yep. Like he wasn't doing it every single day. Here you're doing this is a 15 second, 60 second clip that you can edit on your phone it's easy it's sure you got to take some time maybe you learn to dance to like do one that's super entertaining right so you're yeah. de dedicating a little bit of time but you're posting consistently yes. and people are starting to see this regularly right correct another good example and, I, and i'm gonna give him a shout out because he's he's a, a sponsor like john dar recently has uh created a youtube channel yep and he's been making these super like quick Motivational quote videos. Yep. Where he visits somebody here in town, introduces their business, and does like a little motivational quote of the day. Like they're probably 60 seconds long, Correct. right? They are. And he's editing them on his phone and, and throwing them up on YouTube. Like yep. that will work. Yeah. Okay. And what's funny is that he's not selling and he's not saying this is why you should buy insurance, buy this kind of insurance. But, you know, nothing about insurance, but people are going to know, hey, that's the motivational insurance guy. Correct. Yeah. Right, and you become the motivational insurance guy, just like you become the TikTok mortgage guy. Correct. 
Yeah, and that's what's <laughs> right? happening. And yeah, that's, what's, that's, ex- that's exactly what's happening. So and, I just want people yeah. to like realize that by the consistent, just like just like I be, I'll become the the Gainesville podcast guy. Yeah. Right, because it's consistent. Just like I was, have been the the Gainesville scooter guy for all these years. Like because of the consistency and the execution and the discipline and actually creating that content and releasing it out regularly, uh, it will work and it will build your brand. Yeah, it's because it's easy to just say I'll do it tomorrow and I'm not going to release today. And John, I've seen his stuff. I mean, now I've seen it. It's it's, it's because of the consistency is coming. I see it more. It's popping up. Uh, there was a guy, uh, Alec Hansen, on on um, from Lone Depot. He's he's a divisional over there. He did a hundred videos in a hundred days, and that hundred videos in a hundred days took him from where people really didn't know who Alec Hansen was in our industry to now everyone knows who Alec Hansen is because in LinkedIn he kept popping up no matter what. He's here's here's it's Alex, tough. you know, and and <laughs> you know, and he he struggled. He's like, man, it's, I had to come up with something. And he he had good content, like actual thought provoking stuff. Mine's nowhere near like that. Mine's been not, and I always tell him. I, I told him in my in 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 in, in, in some shout outs that you create amazing stuff. My stuff is just stupid. <laughs> Have you had anything like really kind of, I'll say, go viral on LinkedIn, like that you created on TikTok? <laughs> There's been a couple that have gone gone fairly. I wouldn't say super viral, but they've they've just gotten a lot of a lot of traction. Have um, any idea like view wise? Um, view wise, I think um, probably about four thousand or so. Okay. Um, and but they're continually going. Right. And that's what I've noticed about them. Now, there, there's a few videos that I put out, you know, a month or two ago. And I'll suddenly see comments come out. Right. On Somebody it. seeing it for yeah. the first time. And so it's like, oh, that thing's still floating out there. You know, so that was one thing I, I thought. Are you hashtagging it? On LinkedIn? Yeah, I hashtag it with mortgage stuff typically and the digital mortgage guy. So I, so I hashtag it out. I don't try to over hashtag it. And when I first started releasing the videos, I actually tagged some folks that I really wanted to actually see it. And there were guys that I knew and girls that in the industry that I knew were connected. And if I could get them to like my stuff and make comments on it, I knew other people would start to see it. And that started getting it more seen by more people. And it was some some key folks in the industry. And so by doing that, that actually got it, I think, more traction on LinkedIn initially. Yeah, I really want people, when they stop listening to this episode when we're done, I want them to understand that you used a platform for 13 year olds Right, that that's what people are saying. Yep. TikTok's for kids, right? You use this platform to edit great and create great content. That you then exported that content from TikTok and went to platforms like LinkedIn and used it to build your brand. Correct. And that's something that anybody can do. And not only that, but because of it, your TikTok following has grown. Yeah. And so, you, so you're at like three thousand ish something followers. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. So that's only going to continue to. to to grow as you put that content out there, yeah, right? And then by the time everybody else decides, you know, the mortgage guy 10 years from now decide, all right, like, let me check out this platform. You're gonna be the one and only guy. Yeah, my, my strategy of getting in early on it has been to try to be a leader on it. And, and, um, and I've been asked now on, on quite a few podcast industry wise to come in and talk about what are you doing? You know, so, and that's, so here's a whole other benefit right, is the, because you caught my attention, so I'm like, hey dude, let's have a podcast, let's yeah. talk about it, right? So that's exposure for you and Correct. your brand. Yeah. Now you're being interviewed on two other podcasts this week, you said? Yeah, yeah. And that's additional exposure for your brand. So you're consistently building your brand because people have found this content. Yeah, and that's the thing, is people <laughs> are seeing it. Yeah, and it's, and it's like you said, consistency is, is everything with it. I mean, that's, that's where I see to anyone that's getting into this, uh, any social media, you gotta be consistent. Um, what's the craziest thing that you've seen on TikTok? Ooh. Like, is there a video that you remember? You're like, man, that was really good. Um, there's a guy named Christian that creates some really awesome stuff. Um, that's, is that his handle? Yeah. And his, his stuff, I mean, um, is just awesome. He used to be on Vine, and so he's recreated some of his Vines onto there. And then just some of his stuff is, is I, I, I don't know, I can't really describe some of them, but they're just, they're funny. I mean, one of them that he did I thought was awesome, and I actually took the audio of it and made the straw commercial, the straw one I made. Um, I so took, just so you guys know, let's, <laughs> 
Let's drop that real quick, right? <laughs> so there's been a meme that's been going around Gainesville that shows a picture of straws tucked in the side of pants, and it says, what's it say at the top? Uh, concealed, concealed carry in Gainesville. Concealed carry <laughs> in Gainesville because of the plastic straws, yeah. and everybody now carrying now has to have paper straws when you go to a restaurant or something, but yeah. he's got like a whole you can pull them 50, out. 50 plastic straws <laughs> in, his, in the side of his pants, and... Uh, you made that meme, yeah, and it got shared a lot. Yeah, I saw it take off. I was like, "Ooh, that's going around." That's a, that that one went good, and then I made a. Uh, Do you kind of wish you would have put like by your handle, <laughs> like give yourself a little plug in the corner? I, I don't know. It maybe, maybe not. Depends. <laughs> I, it, it may it, be careful on you know. I don't want to get get arrested on on having the straws, you know. But uh, <laughs> I mean, and I made a, a a TikTok to it as well as is, is showing that you know when you're drinking the straw and then show me pulling a straw out and put it in there, and I used that guy Christian his his audio that he made um but his video was he was actually in a spider suit on the wall and he like walks in and it's just as funny as ever you have to see it and it's just so if you ever find that TikTok of mine with that audio you just click the audio and you'll find him and watch his video it's it's a good one I love that one his stuff is awesome he's he just and there's several guys that was, on there. A, was that a, that was a duet or what no no oh. he 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 does people's duetted him but um I just took his audio when I I saw the video and I was like man I love the audio on this I can figure something out with this yeah and so I saved it and then one day I said I, I was I actually was at the movies and I had this paper straw and I was like oh god you know so I, and then it clicked and I said that's the audio I'm gonna do that video when I get home and that's what I did uh, so and that's sometimes how the ideas come they'll just you know you something that happens to me and I remember it, and then I'll try to flip through and find the, find some audio. All right, so <clears throat> be honest, because I know that you're making, <clears throat> excuse me, a couple hours uh, a week making your own content, right? Do you spend time consuming the uh, content? Like, because the one thing that I found, and I will give a warning to everybody who downloads this app, is that it quickly becomes your new version of television. Correct. Like I have yeah. laid in bed and watched TikTok after TikTok yes. after TikTok after TikTok because they're s- super entertaining. They're yeah. funny. No, I've done it. I've I've done the same thing where you're. It's, yeah, warning. That is a definite PSA <laughs> because it's easy because it's it's so fast. It's ten or fifteen seconds. You just flip through, and there's such good creativity on there. Some of these people really come up with some funny Dude, stuff. Seriously, some of them I like try to fit, figure out, and I still don't yeah. know how they did it. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, some of them, you're just like, wow, these, these people. Yeah, exa- I do the same thing. You're like, wow, this this guy or girl is amazing. So, so I watch those things. So yeah, you can get zoned in. You know, put a timer and and force yourself to stop because it, I've done that where you, where you've sat there. So and I I don't do it during work time. You know, my actual work time during the day, but at night, whenever, you know, put the kids to bed and, and I'm just kind of getting ready to get back into doing something. If you get on there, it, it can it can swallow you. Okay. Um, last question. You know, somebody who now has listened to our TikTok episode of this podcast, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's probably like happy now that he was sick because he's like, <laughs> he, <laughs> uh, uh, somebody's listening to this. They're like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to listen to these guys. I'm going to go download this app. Like what, what advice would you tell them to, to get started? You know, what, what should they do just to, to get started and get going? So, I mean, the first thing I would do is download it and, um, flip through it first, just flip through it to get used to it. Um, and then um, learn, you may have to go to YouTube or something to figure out where you need to go to save and how to save videos and stuff, or if you know someone that you knows how to do it, let them show you how to save the data and, and create a favorites list that um, when I'm saving sounds, sometimes I don't know what I'm gonna use that sound for or that that sound bite. Do you save just the sound bite or do you save the entire video? I save the, the sound bite. I okay. don't save the whole video. I, you can I'll, add a video to your favorites too. Yeah, you and can I wasn't add, sure if you're doing that to kind of like remind you what the content. No, because um, usually I'm not gonna use what they did the video on. I'm usually gonna. I'm just looking for the sound because I'm gonna create something completely different. Typically, of whatever they did, I found that sound and I go, oh, I can do this with it. Um, and so that's how I I use. So I'm I'm just saving the sounds. I'm usually not gonna duplicate whatever they did. 
Um, just like with the Christian video, I mean, I, I saved his sound. I knew I wasn't gonna make a spider on the wall video, even though it was awesome, but he already did it. And so I was like, I gotta find something else that I could do with the same exact sound and make something different. So, and just let your mind go, you know, and and if, if your instinct says, I'm gonna make this happen, go with it. That's, that's the biggest thing for me, because I, I was scared initially of doing a little kind of silly Outside with the, the box, stuff, yeah. yeah. Um, and I wasn't sure my very first one that I sent was you know, that I did that other than the, the fast paced one that was going to be a, more of a funny one was, was when someone buying a car and then I'm like running down the stairs and it's like all crazy. I wasn't sure how that was going to go and I put it on LinkedIn and it just whoosh, took off and I was like, okay, people are taking this right. And so I decided I'm going to go with it and just go. And so, yeah, just, just start saving the sounds. If you're going to use it for creativity, start saving the sounds or saving the videos watch how people are leveraging it, um, and uh, just think of how you can get your message across quickly and easily using the, using the platform because it's so easy to use and just get yeah. your message out there without much time. And I would say like, if, like when you're learning, like copy somebody else's content, you yeah. know, like, like you said with the dance, like learn, like learn a dance mm -hmm. or like, um, there are trending hashtags on there, so you can go search the hashtags and see like what's like what's hot, like what's being used a lot right now, and that kind of thing. Correct. Um, yeah. So yeah, you can use a, you see a, a trending sound, and you can you can do something similar to what other folks have done with it into your whatever you're trying to do. Yeah. So yeah, you can definitely do that. So I do have one more question. Uh, have you noticed any algorithm secrets, like anything that you've done that's caused a video to, to really spike and you're like, oh, I know that this is, this is why? On, well, on TikTok, it was one that's actually, you helped me figure that one out. It's actually, somehow the, the sound that I downloaded, uh, that I saved, it said I was the original creator. And so TikTok likes original. So no, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. I think John Dar actually told me that. Yeah, and, he and, told me. And it, and it just, <laughs> and that one took off on on LinkedIn um I, it's just been timing when the time hits and I think initially tagging certain folks in it so I knew that key players were going to see it and like it hopefully <laughs> and not get ticked off that I tagged them in it um and that helped me I think get the initial kickstart on LinkedIn as far as folks seeing it um the right folks because once on, on LinkedIn, what I find is if you get folks to have a good amount of followers and some influence on there and they start commenting or liking your stuff, you start push, you, you push up quickly. And that's what I've seen. And, and now I don't have to tag those guys. Now when I put it out there, I mean, we, as soon as I release it, I instantly start seeing likes and I instantly get some feedback within, within a few minutes now. And before it would be a couple of days and, you know, seeing, waiting for somebody to comment and you're like, is it working? You know, and then on, on Facebook now, you know, people usually comment pretty quick or usually send me um, some kind of message on it. So it, 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 it's just the timing and stuff really for me. Cool. You're gonna become like this TikTok consultant in the mortgage world. <laughs> You'll be like speaking at like all these conferences. Big conference, TikTok, TikTok. Yeah, I have to demonstrate it and get up and dance in front of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I would. So, well, thanks so much for coming on the show. Like, yeah, man. It, it's certainly fascinating. I, I again, like having somebody catch my eye and using the platform in a very unique way. Instantly, when I saw that you were like taking the content from TikTok and putting it on LinkedIn, I was like, man, this guy's smart. Like. He's, he's got this figured out. And uh, and then, you know, really like you said, like TikTok makes it easy to do that. Yes. Like the ability to share where other platforms, they don't want you leaving their no. platform. They don't want you going off. Facebook doesn't want you leaving Facebook. Nope. Uh, TikTok's like, yeah, get out get out yeah. of here. Get out of here, go <laughs> share, share it. Share, yeah. share it on Facebook, share it yeah. everywhere. Cause I mean, so. it says TikTok, 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 TikTok. Everybody knows what it is. So, yeah. I mean, it was it's smart. Which was smart did. from yeah. them because it shows your handle yep. in the video clip when you export it. Correct. So it just brings more awareness to the fact yeah. that it is a TikTok and it has your brand there. So yeah, uh, it has your handle there, excuse me. Uh, yeah, this is awesome, man. So like our audience wants to go follow you on TikTok now and yeah. other social media platforms. Where can our audience like find you? Where can they contact you? So maybe yeah. they need a mortgage where they hit you up. Well, on mortgage, they can go to dig, uh, digitalmortgagegui.com. Okay. And they'll find me there and all my data is right there. Um, and, um, and on my, um, on, uh, 
YouTube, you can find me as just Joe Hancock. You'll find me there. On Facebook, Joe Hancock Mortgage, you can find my page. On uh, on TikTok, it's saying it's Joe Hancock Nine. I don't even remember what it is on that one. Um, was that auto assigned? Or yeah, what? it was auto assigned because yeah. I I really didn't think I was like I'm just gonna sign no, up just and like... see and play with it. I didn't think it would do anything. Honestly, I was like this. I'm just gonna <laughs> mess around and see what happens, you know. So um, and was uh, it that one just like catching fire? Like one caught fire, you're like, oh dang, this can do it. Or what like, it, actually, what it was was the ease of use for me, and the create the the ability to be creative on it without having to put so much effort into it. That that's what I it. liked. I was yeah. like, you know, and I could act on this and be silly and stupid and and get it out there really easy, without having to. You know, I have you know I I have equipment at home. I have a I have a decent camera, but I only have one, and it, and I don't have and it's me, <laughs> so I can't. I'm gonna have to try to. So with the, with the, my phone, I can do you know in and out and all this stuff yeah. really fast. So right. it makes use. it easier. So that's, that's yeah. cool, man. So that was it. Well, this has been fascinating. I'm sorry, like I had five like five last questions. <laughs> that tends to happen sometimes. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so world, real quick, I'll tell you this. Uh, I don't have nearly the TikTok influence that Joe over here has, uh, but you can find me on TikTok. I've definitely been in there. I, I've created like a hundred videos and, and I enjoy it too. Uh, and my right now my handle is actually whoa GNV. Yeah. So it's W-H-O-A G-N-V. If you go like follow that on TikTok or you know, look for that username on TikTok, you'll find me, I'm there. And uh, I wanted my name, but somebody has my name. Like what the hell? Maybe we'll have to like. Wow! Make, yeah, we'll have to we'll have to like change that up, make that happen at some point. Oh, well, you have to get one to do a TikTok together. I've got a couple other people that are now wanting to do TikToks with me. So yeah, yeah. that's a whole other thing. Yeah. So you do other TikToks. The the ability to do TikToks with other people. Yeah. And the, I mean, it, it's it's awesome. Like I can literally sit here for another hour and talk about this. So maybe <laughs> maybe we'll dive into a couple things in the in the side hustle, but. You guys, thank you so much for listening, Joe. Thanks for coming on. Absolutely. Keep TikToking. And, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we will see you later. This is the WHOA GNV podcast, the podcast bringing you businesses and individuals that make you go, whoa. whoa. Mike, brother, I hope you feel better. We missed you. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.